I've been and, seeing uh, like I've been seeing more for sale signs than I've seen in years right now. Mm -hmm. And we have we've got five listings right now. We've got another five coming out in the next ten days. Like that's mm -hmm. the most I've had in like I don't know years. I think it's going to keep trending that way. Like I think we're going to see more and more listings over the next like for the rest of the year. I think it's just going to keep going up. So it's just a matter of when that like where that breaking point is, where there's so many listings at good prices that people start pulling the trigger and that supply starts diminishing. But that it's, I think mm -hmm. until then, we're just going to see the listings continue to increase. And it's Price just a matter balanced. of that tipping point. Yeah, like where is that tipping point where it balances out where people actually say, okay, this is now, this is when we can start getting in. You're listening to the Ottawa Real Estate Podcast with your hosts, Paul Stevenson, David Warren, and Greg Campbell. Let's see what's going on in the world of real estate today. Hello, and welcome to the Ottawa Real Estate Podcast, your go-to source for all things real estate in the nation's capital. Hosted by me, Paul Stevenson, David Warren, and Greg Campbell. We're here to bring you the latest insights, tips, and trends in the Ottawa housing market. Before we dive into today's episode, we have a quick favor to ask. Did you know that most of our listeners aren't subscribed to the podcast crazy right guys That's by subscribing crazy. you'll never miss an episode and you'll be the first to know about the latest up updates and valuable information we share so take a moment now hit the subscribe button and while you're at it give us a like as always if you have any questions or need more information or just want to chat with us don't hesitate to reach out we're always here to help engage with our community all of our contact info is in the description notes thanks for tuning in and let's get started with today's episode gentlemen Start your engines. Yes. <laughs> How are we doing? Start swarm, your real estate swarm, engines. Swarm. We're always swarming. Vroom. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> We're How are we doing? You know, it's, it's funny, this business of real estate. I find that this year, like the end of last year, has been challenging. And then just you surprises come in. Surprises come in. Surprises go. Every deal is different. That never changes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's a lot, a lot of interesting stuff going on. I don't know. What are you guys, what are you seeing? What are you seeing out there right now? I have a fun story. Do you want me to lead that's, off with a story? That's something, that's something that you're seeing and hearing. <laughs> I, I will leave the neighborhood and the, I'll leave all the, most of the specifics out of it just to not give away. I don't want people Googling search, Googling searching, Googling searching the, the location. So basically I have a uh, client's pre-approved been shopping for a while, waiting for the perfect home. They have less than a 20% down payment. So they're basically having to shop under the million mark because of the fact that the mortgage needs to be insured. So all this to say, they find a beautiful home, perfect neighborhood they want to live in, super excited. I write them a letter just stating, you know, XYZ, David and Greg have been pre-approved for this property at this price. All documents and credit has been reviewed in advance. Basically good to go. Can't be any more secure on letterhead the whole nine. They submit that with their offer, only a condition for financing. That's the only condition on the on the option, on the offer. I get an email from the sellers of the property asking me about the contents of the letter, asking me if it's legitimate. Can you tell us any more about these clients? And I was like, what the heck's going on? This is crazy. I've never seen this before. So I wrote them back being like, I obviously can't disclose any information, but the contents of the letter are accurate. And explain to them like the purpose of this letter is to give them peace of mind that this isn't, you know, the, the file is strong. I've reviewed everything. There's there's very little to worry about here. Basically to just give them comfort. Like it's that's what it's there for. They ended up not getting the property. The sellers, even after that back and forth, even saying like, oh, this has eased our mind. Thank you so much. They took an offer that was 30,000 less and was unconditional. 30,000 mm -hmm. less? Yes. Wow. That's yes. A... And their financing condition was for three days with a letter stating like, this isn't going to be an issue but it's in there. And I told them like, hmm. this is just to protect the buyers. Like this is just to protect them. Like ultimately the bank holds the bag and we have to get an approval, but like, this is a very strong situation. $30,000. They could have waited three days and they probably hmm. still would have had that offer ready to go yeah. at the same price. A hundred percent. They needed to go back who that's yeah. that agent. I, Wow. Yeah. Um, and the buying agent told me, she's like, I've never seen this in my, I, I think it was 20 plus years. She's like, I've never seen this happen mm -hmm. before. And like, mm -hmm. what an ignorant listing agent. To That's not. so substantial. That's a substantial, like it's one yeah. thing if it's a $5,000 $5, yeah. difference or, you know, something like that. But 30,000 is That's pretty substantial, money, especially for only a couple of days. Yeah. Um, 
So clients are heartbroken. You know, they've been waiting months to find that perfect home. This was it. And mm -hmm. obviously, you know, they're protecting themselves. I have no, you know, I very rarely, if ever, well, never, I never on record, never tell people to go in without the condition for financing. It's a personal choice. Okay. That you have to make super strong file, but the clients are upset, obviously at losing out on this. So disappointing, but that's what we're seeing. We're seeing crazy things happen right now. It's a, it's a very, very wild market. There's properties that are, in my opinion, beautiful that are sitting. There's others that are, you know, at lower price points that are having multiple offers. And, and it's just, it's such a wild market. Every property is so unique. Every application on the mortgage side is so unique. I'm talking to underwriters. I'm talking to lenders. I'm talking to other brokers. Everyone is saying like, there's no easy files. Every file is challenging. Everything's complicated. And we talked about this last week, but Greg, it seems like even on your side, nothing is clean. Like everything is other than that one offer that was unconditional, but mm -hmm. like nothing is clean. There's always some hair on the dog. You know, there's always something these days that's, that's making it a little more challenging. So I don't know yeah. if that's playing into the market and, and the stagnation that we're seeing, but you know, nothing's easy right now. Well, that's like, we have a condo for sale, finally got it, got that sold. And then, you know, it's a $400,000 condo. And then the bank, well, the lender wanted an appraisal on it, you know, which is, you know, not uncommon, but you know, it was just like, it's a $400,000 condo, new build. They figured that why, why, but needed it anyways. And then the lender wouldn't give the buyer the financing unless someone was removed from title. There were three people on title. One had to be removed to get it. So that was, I mean, we were all, even the agent, he's been doing it for years. He's like, I don't know what is happening here, but this is just seems, it seems ridiculous for the price, mm -hmm. especially when they were putting, I think, 35% down. Hmm. Like very strange. Yeah. You know, I don't know why that would be happening, but I don't know, something to think of. Yeah, typically lenders will do like a an automated valuation model, like an AVM. They call it. They'll they'll see what the pro what they think the property's worth, and if that checks out, typically they won't request an appraisal. But I would mm -hmm. say, on most purchases now, it's probably like Dave. I don't know what you're seeing, but I, I'd say probably eighty to ninety percent of purchases are needing appraisals. Like it's very common mm -hmm. now. It, it wasn't that like honestly, it was probably fifty fifty a year or two ago. Now it seems like almost, almost every file needs an appraisal. Refinance is a hundred percent for sure. But it, yeah. It's funny that it would need purchases. it now though. It's not like we're in a market where everything's going over asking, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's, that I, was the strange thing, especially yeah, they, at the low price. The, so for insured mortgages, they're like, you know, it's maybe one or less than 5% need an appraisal on an insured mortgage. They just have so much data to go off of, but for conventional deals, yeah, it's certainly uh, more needing it. There's also not as many transactions though. So those, <clears throat> those auto valuation systems use, like they have to go okay. by most recent 90 day sales. And so when there's not enough transactions in a specific area, there's not enough data points. And so they're, that's where they're having to rely on that. The expertise of an individual that's going to assess, not just that immediate area, but then also kind of expand beyond that. And then they're also their, you know, insurance kicks in for that appraiser that if something goes south on that, on that deal, that's that fair. they're also on the hook. <clears throat> that's that's where that kind of kicks in a lot of times that I'm seeing. So especially out in like rural areas, stuff like that, or higher mm -hmm. price points, that's where they're definitely- uh, Yeah, higher price them. points, I can imagine for sure. Because there's mm -hmm. a lot, it's just different. But anyways, I thought that was, you know, so our extensions are using going the full day as we had to get an extension on the financing. Now it's in conjunction with the status certificate review and that's all due today. So- mm -hmm. I hope that it's getting done and it closes in a week. So mm. <laughs> it was a quick one. Sp speaking of insured mortgages, Dave was mentioning on the insured side, I saw a stat earlier today that the number of mortgages originated, so this is all insurance types, is the lowest number it's been since the Bank of Canada started recording it. So under 100,000 mortgages were insured, sorry, were issued in Q1 of 2024. And there's actually a very interesting chart that dates back to about 2014. At the peak, there was close to 300,000 mortgages being originated. That was, well, believe it or not, in uh, 2020 to 2021, where everything was going mm -hmm. crazy. But now th the chart is pretty staggering, like a, literally a drop of 3x from you know 300,000 down to below 100,000. So that's mortgages issued in Q1 of 2024. There's a lot of factors in there, as we've talked about all year, people waiting for the rate cuts, 
people unsure of where things are, just rates being heightened in general. Mm-hmm. And and just the winter months, you know, January to March is not exactly the the largest mortgage origination months typically, but it's a pretty pretty staggering number. And we'll make sure Steve gets the the chart in the video as well to to show everyone that. That was from a that was a Twitter. 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 A little tweet. A tweet. Uh, what, are they a, a seat. what are they what are they? X. X's? My ex posted that. Hey, well, one of my exes. <laughs> one of my <laughs> The, the, yeah. And, and to be clear on that as well, like an insured mortgage, that is a purchase. Those are purchases because you can't, that doesn't incorporate refinances or conventional. So, which is really interesting. That's strictly purchases. So it kind of shows how slow the market's been. So if you're a mortgage agent or a realtor out there that's been wondering or, or wondering if it's just your business, that's been slow the kind of those stats show it as well. Are you thinking of buying or selling a residential property? Relationships are at the heart of every real estate transaction. At Galtain Poirier Avocat Lawyers, we love to bring residential buyers, sellers, agents, lenders, mortgage brokers, and the law together to close the deal for you. For an effortless client experience that opens doors, call us at 613-744-4488 or visit our website at galtainpoirierlaw.ca. Let's get to the heart of your deal. Are you trying to grow your mortgage business? Centum has the tools and support to help you take your business to the next level. Get access to everything from free unlimited custom marketing to daily direct pay. Find out what your business can do with Centum. Learn more at joincentum.ca. Yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. I mean, speaking of crazy. Tell us. Spring, tell us spring market. What, what else is crazy? Excuse me. The spring market lowest very low i'm just going to recap what the canadian real estate association posted here the other day the canadian real estate market experienced one of its worst spring seasons on record the canadian real estate association reported that home prices declined in may due to a weak demand despite expectations that rate cuts would boost the market sellers overestimated the number of buyers leading to a huge surge in inventory to record levels while sales fell significantly The seasonal adjusted composite benchmark price of a home in Canada decreased by 0.2% to $714,300 in May, marking a 2.4% drop from the previous year. Over the past three years, home prices have only increased by 6.2%, with a compound annual growth rate of 2.0%. Home sales in May were among the weakest on record, with a 5.9% annual decrease in seasonally adjusted existing home sales. This was comparable to the early pandemic period. Sellers had not anticipated such a sharp decline, resulting in the new listings, resulting in new listings climbing by 13.5% to return to the 10-year average. Some markets like Greater Toronto saw an even more significant increase in inventory, obviously. Despite the anticipated Bank of Canada rate cut, there's been no significant rebound in real estate activity or prices so far. We're seeing it. I'm seeing it this May. Week, spring, can... market, spring market decided not to launch. Just, no, just I mean, sitting it in never really did, waiting. right? And and people were thinking, you know, we we had that initial surge of the swarm, as as we called it, <laughs> in that last week. It really, or the last two weeks, like instantly, things kind of changed quickly when the when the rate cut happened. But nothing has really changed that much. I mean, there's there's more buyers out. There's one hundred percent more listings out, but people are hesitating on pulling the trigger more than more than anticipated and i think that the sellers you know based on you know speaking with a professional or whoever thought that there would be more activity right away like we're seeing homes that are that are priced well they're still sitting and everyone's being picky for example we launched one last weekend at 399.9 it's a condo townhome updated it's amazing ready to go some people wouldn't like the location, but that shouldn't stop a sale of this kind. So we had an open house. We had, I think, seven showings total and nothing happened. However, today we have eight showings alone on the property. Hmm. So I don't know if that was one of the classic Father's Day weekend kind of things that mm-hmm. happened, but mm-hmm. I'm hoping that I'm hoping that it moves this this week and we'll see what happens with that. Yeah, when I was listening to our pre- Pre spring market predictions, I think it was Jan- end of January. One of the things that I had thought at that time, and I still believe it now, is that we are going to see a busier. This is our, 
a busier summer. Infinite optimism. Yeah, busier summer. Mm-hmm. Like I think with the with the recent rate drop, I think people are m- more active in the market again. Maybe they haven't bought anything, but I mean it's literally been a week. So, you know, it's not it's not to get too ahead of ourselves. But I do think like fixed rates are on the like the bonds are on the decline. We're seeing fixed rates decrease. Uh, I think with school ending, people having more time, I don't think as many people are going away this summer due to, you know, financial restrictions. So I think people are going to be more active. They're going to be around town. They're going to be looking for things to do. There's going to be a lot of listings, a lot of opportunities. People are going to be seeing for sale signs everywhere. I think it's just going to spark more everywhere. conversations. I've been and, seeing uh, like I've been seeing more for sale signs than I've seen in years right now. Mm-hmm. And we have we've got five listings right now. We've got another five coming out in the next 10 days. Like that's the most I've had in like, I don't know, years. I think it's going to keep trending that way. Like, I think we're going to see more and more listings over the next, like for the rest of the year, I think it's just going to keep going up. So it's just a matter of when that, like where that breaking point is, where there's so many listings at good prices that people start pulling the trigger and that supply starts diminishing. But that it's, I think mm-hmm. until then, we're just going to see the listings continue to increase. And it's Price just a matter balanced. of that tipping point. Yeah. Like, where is that tipping point where it balances out where people actually say, okay, this is now, this is when we can start getting in. But mm-hmm. we've seen it for years. Like people, uh, you know, the people that are going to buy are going to buy. <laughs> this is such a redundant comment. People are going to buy are going to buy. The people that are going to wait are going to wait. And, you know, there's a lot of listings. We're going to wait. Prices are on the decline, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And prices aren't on the decline, but you understand what I'm saying. So we'll see. But I, I do think this summer we're going to see more transactions, especially with the way the spring market has has trended so far. I think we're going to see all those. It's just going to be delayed a few months and we're going to see more people out in the summer shopping. I think our thumbnail was just created. It's Paul's face and the headline is prices are on the decline. (laughs) How many views do you think we'll get from that? (laughs) With my hand like this. (laughs) 2,000 views. Yeah, yeah. Most Um, ever. We'll make 10 bucks. Good good news, gentlemen. One thing that is on the the incline, incline, (laughs) is uh, housing starts. So I was reading an article in Financial Post this morning. It says Canada housing starts jumped to the highest level in seven months because the country's two largest provinces ramped up construction on apartments, townhouses, and condominiums. Builders started work on an annualized 264,000 units in May, according to data released Monday from the Canada uh, CMHC. That's an increase of 9.7% from a month earlier. More than economic... Econ- ec- well, economists? Ec- economists? Economists? <laughs> there we go. Wow. Uh, more than economists, <laughs> economists had expected. <laughs> my emphasis was on the wrong Sal Abel. I had expected in the Bloomberg survey, Ontario and Quebec, the country's most populous provinces, led the increase in starts, rising 18% and 67%, respectively. Housing starts fell 16% in British Columbia, Canada's westernmost province. In summary, Canada's housing starts surged to a seven month high, with Ontario and Quebec leading the rise in construction of apartments, houses, townhomes, communities. Housing starts in May hit yada yada. The government has introduced Measures to boost construction due to housing affordability challenges. Canada faces a housing shortage and needs 3.5 million more units by 2030. CMHC predicts a slowdown in housing starts for the rest of 2024. So good news, I guess. You know, they got some shovels in the ground. I'm sure they probably submitted their permit applications last January. So they, they finally finally were able to get that shovel in the ground. But yeah, what do you guys see? I mean, I, I do see, I'll, I'll be honest, everywhere I go, I do see you know, shovels in the ground, uh, you know, even driving on Highway 7, I'm seeing, you know, Kavanaugh's got a thing going on the right, someone else has a thing Mm -hmm. going on the left, like there seems to be development everywhere. I think it's just not enough, right? It's still not enough. We need way more than people are, are envisioning, I think. Well, I will tell you one thing. I think that this June, once this month is over, that we're going to see the most amount of listings on the market in Ottawa in the history since they started recording those numbers. That's my prediction. We'll see that, you know, by the end of the first week in July, because we're not too far off right now. May's basically almost the highest. And then J- June is going to, I think it's going to crush it. So what does that mean, guys? Opportunities mm-hmm. for buyers, right? That's what we do. <laughs> Swarm. Buyers. Swarm. <laughs> guys, there's so many homes for sale. Come out with us. Come shopping. We're going to have a great time. <laughs> oh, my God. We're going to have a great time. we got to make that a meme wow. of some sort. <laughs> wow. Great what a dance. Penguin, penguin walk. What a dance. <laughs> oh, shit. I, I, I definitely uh, I got, will say I got that... something. I want to talk about builders here, just since you brought up builders and developments. This was something that was posted in, I'll promote it, the Ottawa Citizen in the local paper, the local newspaper. 
this is a battle between Ashcroft and the city in Orleans. And I mean, I live out that way. I know Ashcroft has had many problems out there. They own tons of land right off of Navin Road and no mm -hmm. mm -hmm. tons of land next to like Minto Matami. And there's some Claridge coming in there, but Ashcroft owns a ton of it. You know, they were in the news a couple of years ago for taking deposits ready to build. And then when the market went up, they wanted to give everyone back their money. And in hopes of selling for more or something like that, I can't speak clearly. It was kind of kind of insane, big, intense thing. I think there's probably some lawsuit against him for that. Ashcroft. I remember I that as well. Yeah, Calling them out. Who knows? So anyways, this was interesting. This is about one person in particular, what their experience has been based on this. I've never heard of this. I don't know why I hadn't heard of this, but this is the story. Excuse me. Sam Beebe. This is the guy. Sammy Beebe. Put a down payment on a house in Eastboro, Orleans in October 2019. Although his four-bedroom home was completed in June 2023, he and 24 other homeowners cannot move in due to a dispute between the city and developer Ashcroft over who should pay for a stormwater sewer. This impasse has delayed occupancy permits. Ashcroft has filed a court claim requesting a work permit and $30 million in damages. But the city's litigation responses remain open to negotiations. Bibby, having paid sixty-six thousand in deposits and ninety thousand in rent over three years, is frustrated by the delays. He sold his house in Gatineau and rented a place in Ottawa, expecting to move in February twenty twenty-two. Ashcroft's agreement with the city involves a front-ending agreement under the Development Charges Act, where the developer installs city services early and is later reimbursed. However, there is a disagreement on whether the stormwater sewer benefits only Eastboro or the broader area. The city agreed to cover some costs, but disputes the total reimbursement amount. Homebuyers face significant financial strain as housing costs have risen since the agreements were signed. Despite the legal and financial complexities, Ashcroft is ready to proceed with the work and resolve the reimbursement issue in court. For BB, walking away would mean losing out on the current market value of his home and wasting significant rental expenses. What a crazy thing, eh? Yeah. That's so that's extremely unfortunate for those <clears throat> for those homeowners like waiting since 2019. And he's in such a dilemma because values obviously skyrocketed since 2019 when he signed that agreement. Um, that's the only thing that he's got. That's hard. Well, not the only thing he's got going for him. He's going to have a house to move into. <clears throat> but, you know, if you the further into the article, you know, it's him, his wife, kids, everything. They're mm -hmm. all displaced, renting, couldn't move in. What he's got going for him is the value, you know, the mm -hmm. current value. I just don't know what that's gonna look like once he moves in but i'm sure he's that that equity has come back a bit but i mean that's a lot Ninety thousand in rent like mm -hmm. 24 homeowners though that's wild i'm gonna go drive by that development uh today because i've never I, that little pocket i haven't been in there hmm. so i want to see it terrible yeah. though it's 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 interesting that it's <clears throat> really a, about the storm like the sewer systems that the city's city and developer are over who, who's going to finish it or pay for it. You would yeah. think that, you know, city would just get it done then, or one of them would just get it done so that homeowners can move in, whether that's city and go after the builder for reimbursement or whatever may be, but, you know, kind of cutting off an entire area and future development as well is, is mm -hmm. uh, mind boggling. Yeah. It obviously we good. don't know the details and the specifics behind it that they've obviously been fighting for a while, but yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting story, though. Thought it'd be good for people to know that. Must be a very mm -hmm. challenging time to be a builder. Not, not. I know yeah. there's good. There's like anything. There's good builders and and not so good builders. And again, not even giving an opinion on on them specifically, but just saying in general, like between the permits, the costs, the like development chart, like everything is just increased. And I'm sure finding good people to work is probably very challenging as well right now. And it's just. Yeah, everything. So many, so much red tape. Like it must be very challenging to manage the budget, the timelines, everything. Supplies. I'm happy I'm not in that industry. I know some people that are, and I know they're not having a, a good go of it the last couple of years. So, yeah, lots I, of tough industries right now. Imagine lots of industries being disrupted. Real estate. Not, not the only one. The Ottawa Real Estate Podcast, where we talk about things like this. And Hope you're having a great time. Go negative. Small. How do you guys feel about mood boost? Is it too early? I nope, feel like we're I don't, know, I don't have much else right now. It's never too early. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't have much else either. I had an article that basically reiterates what Greg said, and I'm tapped out of stories. I only had one story this week. 
So let's get into mood boosts. I got three. I got three today, as always. Number one, how can you tell... I don't like this one. I'm actually going to change it up on the fly. (laughs) Okay, here we go. This one's pretty corny, but good. What do cats eat for breakfast? Mice Krispies. (laughs) Mice Krispies. Mm -hmm. Uh, Number two, what did the judge say when the skunk walked into the courtroom? Odor in the court. Wow. Odor. I feel like I should have just known that one. Yeah, it's it's so obvious. I was waiting for you guys to say it. (laughs) Number three, last but not least, someone told me that I should write a book. I said, that's a novel concept. I like that one. It's very, (laughs) very well thought out. Pin pin drop. What? Novel (laughs) concept. (laughs) Very professional. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Thank you, everyone, for tuning in again. As we let off in the beginning, if you're not already subscribed, please do so. It doesn't matter where you're listening. Even if you're just listening and not watching, give us a little subscribe. Give us a review, even. And we promise to come with more and better episodes in the days to come or weeks Ah, to come. These these are great. More informative. This is what people are here for, you know? Off the cuff, real life. Unsubscribing. Yeah, people yeah. are unsubscribing right now. Negative. You guys <laughs> suck. Swarming to the unsubscribe <laughs> button. <laughs> oh, frig. All right, guys. Have a great week to you both and to everyone listening. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Bye, On guys. the Ottawa Real Estate Podcast. There's this. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe because we'd really like that.